Noxy D Dar. Oh, good grief! What is it this time? You have, on several occasions, paused too frequently. Are you serious? Do you not realize that you just came from a couple of videos ago telling me that I had to start pausing? You have failed to abide by the reactor's protocols, by the reactor's code. You don't play by the rules. We got to put a stop to that. Don't pause. Do you not see that even though you're opposites, you're two sides of the same coin? A coin that I no longer find myself in the counting of. Hang the reactor's protocols. Hang the reactor's code. There is only one code. My code. This, the symbol of freedom. That I seize life in my fashion, in my way. After all, I am a pirate. <laughs> Hey everyone, how's it going? Noxidar here, and welcome to episode 8 of our One Piece reaction. Before we begin, I really wanted to give a tremendous thank you to everybody in the comments who has helped me with just appreciation, um, praise, kindness, an overwhelming amount of insight to really help me appreciate this one piece journey in the last 25 years and the impact that has had on your lives and the lives of others all around the world it's so just enriching to be able to have people kind of give me glimpses that i wouldn't really otherwise be able to glean for myself unless i did some heavy research so the fact that you can kind of bring that to me is just so cool because I'm, I'm trying to hold on to all of it when I do these reactions. And speaking of, when I started to go down this reaction path, the one thing that I told myself I wanted to do and I wanted to make sure I was doing was making videos that added value for me, for new, in this case, One Piece viewers, and also for uh, older One Piece viewers as well. You know, I, I wanted to make sure that I was able to to give something instead of just take away by watching, uh, you know, Oda's creation and the the animators, the voice actors and, and such. I really wanted to create a reaction series in which I was I was fulfilled, you know, in the idea that I might come back to this later and just have fond memories, memories of, you know, my times in Japan. And I think that has been probably one of the most endearing things about this whole journey is that there are memories that I've held on to for over a decade in some cases. And the fact that they get new life and are able to breathe and propagate within the minds of so many uh, that come across these videos is, is truly remarkable and special. And while I don't have the full scope of being able to see and or read uh, One Piece and get caught up the way so many of you are, the one thing that I can really relate to is the way that Oda has taken those stories and helped them propagate within the minds of so many millions. And so that's kind of what I mean by like, I want to add value. I kind of want to do something very similar in that hopefully as a part of your One Piece journey, you can take something that was mine and together we can form that connection over this grand journey. And that's kind of what makes us crew. That's what makes us Nakama. I say this 
a lot in the comments and you might be reading this in the replies, uh, but I truly do mean it when I say that I want to thank you for taking the time to let me be part of your One Piece journey. And at the same time, I'm really thankful that you have chosen to be part of mine. I'm just in the beginning stages of it and we have so much content and probably so many years worth of content ahead of us. And honestly, I can't think of anything I'd rather be doing right now. Uh, you you have all made this so special already. I've, it's probably too early to say it, but for me, I'm feeling it every day I get to wake up and just see what the comments are and look forward to the next video and look forward to more of this story is that this really has been a life-changing endeavor at this point. And uh, this will always be an endearing memory that I'm always going to look back on fondly. And I'll have no regrets. And a large part of that is in thanks to you that are watching now. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I think that's all there is to cover. Nothing else very new or um, discomforting, unsettling. Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing comes to mind. What's that? There's something over there. Oh, oh, over here. Oh, that. <laughs> yeah, I guess we should talk about that, huh? So, <clears throat> I let everybody know a couple of videos back that I had found a live action One Piece AI filter in which I could insert myself into different characters. And uh, of the options that I gave, there was Sanji, Zoro, and Nami. And what did the internet do in the comments? The internet did what it always does. It did that it does. It chose Nami. Well, my friends, be careful what you wish for, because now this cursed image right over here is going to be staring at you for the entire rest of the East Blue. <laughs> you did it to yourself. Anyway, I think we should go ahead and react to episode eight. <laughs> Flashly. Wait a minute. They were fighting over whether the North Pole or the South Pole was colder? This reminds me of conversations that I'd come upon when I was walking down the dormitory to my room in college. People would be out in the hallway and they would be all the way to fisticuffs over the dumbest, most pettiest things ever. And they would always try to wrap me up and take sides in their arguments. And I just kind of pushed through them and I'm like, listen guys, I just got done doing laundry 30 minutes ago i'm gonna walk into my room and i'm gonna open that door and i'm gonna look inside of my refrigerator and there still better be 12 cans of root beer that i bought 30 minutes ago before i started said laundry oh kind of think of it yeah i could probably relate with these two hmm So I'm so curious because right here we, <laughs> dude, Bucky cracks me up. I love him. It's so, he has such an unexpected voice all the time. So like, we know that Buggy is heavily motivated by this idea of treasure in the materialistic sense. And so it's natural that he would see pirate ships as floating treasure chests. I mean, after all, there's an argument to be made that the best thieves in a game like Sea of Thieves are not the ones that go on the adventure to procure said treasure. It's the ones that ruin the day of would-be adventurers and their path to return riches for their wealth and fame and glory. Yeah, I could totally see that. But what I think uh, I would like to know, hopefully they answer it, is what is Shanks's motivation? You're too weak. But we obviously see where, you know, Buggy sees himself standing quite literally standing over shanks him in his shadow which makes me think of that scene in the live action um where he's like <laughs> he's like shouting almost spitting at shanks's hat um something about like he 
Shanks wouldn't let Buggy be the star that shined too bright or something to that effect. So interesting. We might be getting a glimpse of this here. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. Ah, so he's not serious about it. Oh my god. Did he just murder someone? <laughs> this word. I don't know if it means what you think it means. I love... It cracks me up every time I see him use the word flashily. I want to start using that in my everyday life. I love all the blue tones used in this show. <laughs> See the world. Team of time. <laughs> Why does Shanks look like he works at Foot Locker? Right on. <laughs> That's really interesting. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. It's interesting that I see repeated numbers. I don't know if there's any deeper meaning than that, but this is like several times I've seen the number 10 pop up, and then also several times I've seen the number one. Now the second time I've seen 100 million as a very specific amount. I'm not going to describe any deeper meaning to it, but it is kind of interesting to see these parallels um, from past to present. <laughs> it worked flashily. Uh-oh. There you go. Come on, he's asking for help, though. Right? That's like what I took away from it. He literally asked for help and Shanks came and saved him. Obviously, you know, Shanks wasn't hearing him, but like the, the emotion was there. I wonder if it's just, you know, the headbutting of ideologies where Buggy seems like he wants strength or he wants respect through strength his combat prowess he has this romanticized version of what a pirate is and what a pirate ought to be and how a pirate ought to view things around them and yet shanks also has a romantic view of what a pirate is and what a pirate should be and what things should be important to a pirate and so, in a large sense, they agree with each other, but Buggy disagrees more because it's a competition for him. It's almost like I'm seeing a sore loser right now. There it is, 10. Ah. Uh, I don't know, that's a pretty cool dream too. Oh, <laughs> I can just tell what's going to happen next just by the just by Buggy's power stance right there. 
Mhm. His poor buggy balls. It's so interesting that now this is the second island that we've been to. And just from the shenanigans that ensue from Luffy and crew, it's kind of turned everybody into you know um their own little band of freedom fighters because of the acts of uh luffy and crew it's like people around them are getting a greater sense of their own like individual sovereignty She's literally who I just talked about being in Sea of Thieves. This is Nami. <laughs> where where Buggy thought he was also that. Now Nami is showing herself to be even more so. That's funny. The thief that steals from the pirate. I love it. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay, so she's holding a fist up. And then Luffy does this. So Luffy does this with his hands. Is he prepared because of what Nami did to perform John Kim Boy for the treasure? Because Buggy says it's his. Nami says it's hers. And I think Luffy is trying to insert himself into, the <laughs> into this argument because of her holding out her fist like this. I think he thinks this matter will be settled by doing rock, paper, scissors. John Kim Boy. Pom, pom, pom. You know what I mean? That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. I see it now. Ah, I see. <laughs> Everybody shut up. This is mine. <laughs> oh, that's even more terrifying for Nami. This isn't helping. This is so nuts. Oh my gosh. Oh. That's so cool because he didn't take so obviously he deserves the credit for what he did. The fact that he basically dedicated a whole ass whooping to Buggy to the mayor that he whoop his ass so that his ass wouldn't get whooped so that the ass whooping that he gave would keep the ass whooping that he would have gave the only ass whooping that would happen even though two asses were whooped that's pretty special i like that about luffy oh here we go <laughs> <laughs> this show uses silence so well. <laughs> My parts. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Look at that face. Nandamonai. I heard that often said. I'd be walking by and students would be like whispering to each other. This is, this is like not at school, but you know, just around town or something. I'd be walking into town and there'd be students, and you know, I'd say, like, hey, uh, you know, what? Because <laughs> they were looking right at me when they did it. And then, oh, oh Nandamonai. Nandamonai. Uh, it's like, it's so nostalgic to be able to, to hear some of these things that were just. 
it, you know, you think about it, like for four years of my life, just a <laughs> sometimes a daily part of it. Um, yeah, it's 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 so much fun watching this because I really just never know what's going to incite some sort of memory uh, insight. Uh, like we're going to start a riot in my brain, kind of. Sometimes when I try to talk, it feels like there's a bunch of people pushing at the gate and nothing's getting through. So, yeah, maybe insight. Insight of memory. Yep. Ten. There's ten again. Interesting. <laughs> there it is again. I must I must have been a lot like Luffy because I made people in Japan do that quite often. <laughs> Nami is just taking it all in how like deep and like ridiculous of a situation that they created just because he was simply honest and he <laughs> and Luffy's perspective is like, yeah, these are really good people. They're willing to defend their mayor. <laughs> <laughs> like not the no at no point is he just like you're right i did make things worse for us it's more of just like look at look at how kind-hearted these people are defending their mayor that i beat the crap out of <laughs> oh my gosh so uh my my neighbor's dog looks like shushu and this is exactly how my neighbor's dog greeted me today in fact it was right outside my door like my car door as i was pulling up into the driveway and from the time that uh i guess from the time it saddled up to the side of my car and from the time i did that to walking into the house and then i counted 15 seconds after i went into the house the only then did it cease barking and it barked just like this and like you couldn't talk to it it didn't stop to listen if you shouted at it it just barked so <laughs> i wonder what treasure my neighbor's dog is protecting uh from me <laughs> <laughs><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Oh man, that feels like a satisfying conclusion to that story. The music really sells it for me here. Oh man, that was incredible. I think, so I think for a little while, I'm just going to do one episode uh, reactions just to kind of, like I said, build up a little bit of a backlog and maybe we can work into a uh, a kind of, um, what's the word, schedule. And then once we have a schedule, I can start doing, you know, I can work my way back up to two and maybe even three episodes, like just mega reactions. Um, but I think I'd like to do it this way. I thank you guys so much. I don't thank you so much for Nami Dar. <laughs> but to be fair, I do make a pretty cute Nami. I'm not going to lie. All right. I'll give you that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next reaction. This was a lot of fun. Catch you in episode 9. This is Noxidar out. Have a good one.